everybody? Welcome back to another Shop Talk Tuesday. So if you're new to this video series, what this is all about is a commentary based type thing where I do a lot of talking about uh, what we have going on in the background on the channel, what's going to be making it into the videos. Um, I talk about uh, a commonly asked question or something that is a concern or something like that for a lot of the people on both my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, also even people who send me emails and ask me questions. So I kind of answer a lot of that stuff in these videos. So definitely make sure y'all stay tuned to this whole entire video because I do answer a few different questions that people have and concerns. Uh, then we go into a knife section where I talk about a viewer's knife and uh, I show y'all some pictures of them. I tell you a little bit about the knife, tell you about the person who sent in the knife. And if they're a YouTuber, I give you a link in the description for their YouTube channel so you can go check their stuff out. Uh, and then if I have a new tool in the shop that I think is going to help you all out, something that helps me out on a daily basis, I talk about that. But uh, guys, I, I do want to start this off with uh, actually talking about something that a lot of people have asked me about. Plus, I'm going to hit on another little small little caveat. But um, so I've had a lot of people ask me about, for one, my knife templates. Uh, do I have PDF files? Do I have things that I can send you for the shapes of my knives so that you can actually utilize that? Okay, so I do not right now. I don't have any PDF files because every single knife that I do is made up on things like this. This, this is my filing cabinet. <laughs> I don't really do a bunch of PDFs or anything like that. I'll take and I draw out my knife shapes and design them how I think makes sense. Um, I will utilize some of my templates that I have here for knives that I've made in the past because I know how the handles feel and things like that. And I'll incorporate different versions of these handles or blade shapes or something like that into my knives because these things work I know they work so that's what I use but I I don't really use PDFs or anything like that from other knife creators or I don't really go on to like a, I guess you could say whatever you create PDFs on like a program uh, I don't really go in there and do all of those things because <laughs> So what I'll do whenever I get ready to draw a knife, this will kind of make it easy for you. So I'll take something, like I'll take, and you can barely see the outline of it, but there is a piece of steel rectangle outlined on this. I'll take and I'll put that piece of steel on the piece of paper. I'll take my hand and I will measure it out on here, both open and closed because if you didn't know this your hand open is narrower than your hand closed so your hand gets wider as you pull it in so this is how your knife needs to be measured not so much like this if you do this the knife is going to be too short where the handle is but I'll take and I'll measure those things and then I'll start playing with it drawing it out and then I will take this and most of the time I'll put it on template material and I'll go, okay, cool. Let's take this one for example. I'll go, okay, cool. Let's put it on the template material and I can start feeling how it feels in the hand. Where my hand sits with my fingers, my palm. How's it going to rest? How's it going to ride? I'll do all of that and then I'll tweak these and then kind of go from there. Uh, if I'm using a handle that I've used before, I don't so much have to go straight into a template material. I can pretty much just draw it on here, cut it out, and then put it on the, the material that I'm going to be making the knife out of. Uh, but, like I said, I, I don't really do PDF files or anything like that. I plan on eventually having somebody take my templates and scan them and do PDF files for y'all. Um, 
Don't know who I'm going to get with to do that yet. If you are a person that does PDF files and you want to reach out to me, send me an email. Um, I haven't really figured out when or who I'm going to get with to do that yet, like I said. But eventually, I plan on doing that so that y'all can have access to these. Uh, the cool thing is, I don't really plan on doing some Patreon crap where you have to like become Patreon members in order to get these PDF things. Um, I, I won't do that. <laughs> it's not it's not a big thing for me. Uh, what I'll probably do is just have y'all email me once I do the PDF ones and I'll just send y'all uh, the PDF version of it. Um, and yeah, so we'll have that. Anyways, uh, I have had a lot of people ask me about that with the whole PDF files and can I send you links for those or send you the file? And hopefully that answers your question. Uh, whether I do or do not, because right now I don't. Uh, the only things that I have are those. <laughs> I, I say that uh, I've got a lot more than that. So, so this is what I've put up here. Um, but if you actually saw like... Yeah, I've got a lot of templates to make onto template material. By the time this is all said and done, <laughs> this whole wall will be pretty much dedicated to just my templates made out of wood. So, yeah, that's only about a quarter of the designs that I've come up with, just to give you an idea. Okay, so, that was one of the questions. I know that was a big section of this, but I wanted to definitely make sure y'all knew that. One of the other things that I've been asked, uh, or, you know, asked and suggested is like whenever I'm doing my sharpening on my 1x30, some people have asked why I go with the rotation of the belt when the jigs that they make for the 1x30s pretty much make you go against the rotation of the belt. Well, I'll show you why on the higher belts that I go with the rotation. It's not just for the burr, it's because of things like this. Shredded belts. Things like this, where you gotta slice through the belt. So whenever you get up into the higher grits, especially on recurved blades, so something like this, Whenever you get into those higher grits and you're going against the rotation of the belt, it's nothing for a recurve blade to dig into the belt and just pop it. While it's going 3000 RPMs or whatever speed those things go, I've had these belts, and that's just a portion of them, I've had a lot more belts than that in the process of me figuring this out just shred and snap and pop and scare the shit out of you. So, that's the reason why, other than it creating a better burr, that's the reason why I go with the rotation of the belt whenever you get into the higher grits. Of course, whenever you're doing the lower grits, the blade isn't sharp enough to really catch that belt and slice through it. But when you get up to the higher grits where you're creating an insane burr and these blades are getting super sharp, it's nothing for you to accidentally tweak it a little bit and catch that belt and snap it and it catch the knife and throw the knife down and pop the belt into your face. That's one of the reasons why I do what I do with the going against the rotation for some belts and then going with the rotation, especially on recurved blades, uh, like those jigs that they make that go over the platen and the belt goes in between the jig and the platen, they're meant to go against the rotation. Those jigs don't even really work that much on a recurved blade. But just a little info for y'all on why I do that other than the fact that it creates a better burr. It's because I've had these belts snap and I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding about the amount that I've went through for that, it's a lot. 
Um, now, again, hopefully that answered another one of y'all's questions. Um, what we're going to do now, I want to hop into the viewers knife section just because, well, I think we're at like 10 minutes and we need to do that part. <laughs> uh, guys, right here, this knife was made by Matt Branson. Now, this is a fellow YouTuber. Uh, he's got a YouTube channel that I'm going to link in the description below. It's uh, Branson's General Store. So, these are awesome. These are both uh, 36 layer uh, Damascus blades. You want it's so I've seen a lot of people make uh, layered steel, and most of them do two different types of steel. So these are 1075, 15 and 20, and 8670. So I thought that was pretty unique. Um, I like both of these. So one of them was a leather worker's tool. That's the one with the big crown on it. So leather worker's tool. The other one is Camp Knife. That's this one right here. Um, so on the first one, it was uh, that leather worker's knife with the maple handles on them. Absolutely love those. He actually dyed them with uh, leather dye, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then the Camp Knife was done with red and black paper. like So how you would do paper micarta with resin and everything like that. That's what that was. Guys, I thought those were super cool. So anytime someone does layered steel or Damascus steel, I know some people are crazy about, you know, what is Damascus, what isn't Damascus. It's layered steel. They look awesome. They look sweet. Uh, I like the pattern that was on them. But uh, I think those were absolutely awesome. I really want to make a leather worker's tool like that because I'm about to start getting into doing more leather working. So... I think I might end up making one of those. Um, Matt, thank you for sending that in. Guys, y'all tell me what y'all think about those knives. I thought they were super awesome. I like the integral uh, bolster that was on the leather worker's knife, so that was pretty cool. Um, guys, again, you know, go check out his channel. It's in the description below. Click on that. Go check it out. Give him some love. Um, again, Matt, thank you for that. Uh, what I did want to do was I wanted to actually end this with a few things that I have working in the background. Uh, so I've been working on a lot of file knives because I've got a lot of customers that are buying file knives from me. And some of them because I've been able to actually track down those really thick files. Uh, so I am making three of those heirloom style knives. These are very thick files. So I'm gonna be making three of these. These are already sold. Uh, it was not easy tracking down that steel, but I'm doing those and then I'm going to be doing some EDC Tontos out of them. Look how thick that is. So, if you remember the Farrier's Rasp knife that I did, this is another little EDC that I'm making out of another leftover piece from that. Just to give you an idea of the thickness difference there between those two. <laughs> this is about twice as thick as what that Farrier's Rasp knife was made out of. Crazy. Uh, so I am going to be making some really cool Tontos with this. And uh, I am filming this one right here. So you'll actually see that because y'all haven't seen me make one of those yet. But we'll have that coming out. And then we'll also have this guy right here coming out. This is gonna be a really cool Warncliffe style blade. Really excited about that one. I've had this one mapped out and drawn out for a long time. I figured it was might as well uh, pull the trigger on that one. Uh, this is a play on the first knife I ever made. Uh, especially it was made out of a file. It's a cool little Warncliffe style blade. Uh, whenever I actually start showing y'all this, I'll show y'all side by sides and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm excited about that. Uh, tomorrow we are going to be releasing the video for making a sheath for this one right here. So be on the lookout for that. Speaking of that, hey, if you have not yet and you're still here, might as well hit that subscribe button right there and uh, make sure you turn on the notification bell so you get notified for when we do some of this awesome stuff that I have going on down here. And guys, uh, if you haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up, 
share this video or a video I've done in the past that might be your favorite. And I just want to thank y'all for coming by, for watching this. And I know that this is a lot of me talking, but there's really good information in these Shop Talk Tuesdays. I don't just stand up here and talk about going to the post office or what I did at work today. This is me answering the questions that y'all have and that y'all ask me all the time. So hopefully, you know, we'll get to the point to where as many people are watching these as we have watching the other videos because there's great information in these videos that I do every single week. It's not just talking about a bunch of random crap. This is talking about useful information and answering y'all's questions. So, guys, thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. I'll see y'all tomorrow.